Good morning everyone, it's Sophia from MyGreatChallenge.blogspot.com I'm filming every day for the next 12 days, this is day 6. <laughs> So you probably find me to be a little bit slower today. Um, it's because I'm sick. Uh, we went to New York yesterday and I don't know if I pushed myself too hard or if I was already kind of sick. I know I went there. I had post nasal drip to begin with so I thought it was just a little bit of allergy but apparently it's a cold. Not the flu but a cold. So I'm breaking a sweat right now. I gotta take my temperature. I'm gonna take some medication like you know over the counter Alka-Seltzer plus cold whatever. Take the kids to school and then I have a ton of things to do in the kitchen because I told my husband don't do anything I'll do it tomorrow morning so of course what do you do jumped on the occasion not to do anything so I have all the dishes from dinner the bathrooms to clean I have to finish some decor put up the uh, nativity scene what else oh I'm gonna try to make those reindeer today because I figured you know that's something I can do inside it's not gonna be too tiring and I have a massive New York video to edit for you so I don't know how entertaining this video is gonna be today um, because I'm really not feeling like myself I'm, I'm really sick. I really am. Um, I'm going to take the kids to school and probably clean the kitchen and kind of like tidy the living room, dining room area. And then I'm probably going to plunge myself in some scalding bath with lots of bubbles and just sweat out this thing. Uh, take some more meds. Drink a lot of orange juice today for sure. The birds have already been fed, so the dogs have been walked already. Um, yeah, that's it. So I'll do that. I'll take a bath and probably edit some um, for that video. And uh, yeah, taking it easy today. Mm. Not myself. So you know on YouTube you get to see kitchens that are like $50,000, $100,000 and whatever. And everything is just perfect and beautiful. Here is my kitchen that is worth about two bucks. <laughs> Yeah, two bucks. That's about how much it's worth right now because it's just a disaster. I gotta clean everything in here. Yeah, so <clears throat> two bucks kitchen. Uh, listen, I never pretended to be anything other than who I am. This is real life. This is this is what a real home life looks like. It's a disaster most morning. Um, you don't have time to do everything. Sometimes you get help. Sometimes you don't do anything at all and everything falls apart and it's okay. And you can't be ashamed of stuff like that. I mean, people are always telling me, wow, my God, I can't believe you're showing this. I can't believe you're showing that. You know, my dust bunnies and stuff. And I'm like, listen, people want to see me. They don't want to see my house. And if you come over to my house because you want to see my house and not me, then yeah, you're going to notice those things. But if you come over to see me and my family, who cares what the kitchen looks like or that the, uh, you know, this dog here on the sofa things like this. Stop. Really stop freaking out over the cleanliness and the organization and the perfectness of your life. Like perfection is something we thrive for. It's not something that we are. So our lives really have changed over the last 30 or 40 years and the demands of a household have changed as well. I mean, stuff was way more simple back in the days. It's not at all anymore. I mean, we have like more tasks more tools to do those tasks, more things to clean, more, more, more of everything. Yeah, so my kitchen is dirty. Big deal. Well, it's starting to look like human beings actually live in this house. Um, I've cleaned up the entire kitchen except to sweep and mop, but pretty much everything is done. I still have to do the uh, dining room a little bit. Yes, I see you. Yes, I know. I love you too. Yes, you're a good girl. I oh, chose to walk again. Uh, that's all right. I'll do that. And um, I just realized I didn't mail my packages to the family in Ohio. So I have to wrap this stuff and uh, put it in a box, label it, and run to the post office. I received about 17 cards yesterday from you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, probably respond to all of those cards that way I make one trip to the post office instead of two and then check the mailbox again and uh, yeah after that I'll take my hot bath because there's no sense of me getting like all sweaty in that hot bath and then go out in the cold again so um, yeah I'll go to the post office all dirty we never do that I haven't had breakfast yet I better have breakfast all right breakfast I'm gonna have something quick um, this is a six point Weight Watchers 
Canadian style turkey bacon egg sandwich microwave a minute and 35 seconds I'm gonna have that with some grapes that's zero points so that's gonna be a six point breakfast for me I already had an orange juice and some meds so I better make sure that I get something in my stomach before I start getting you know like some uh, acid reflux or whatever not that I have that but I don't want my stomach to start burning um, yes yeah, so breakfast I have um, day number four that's processing over there so you'll have that video in about an hour from now um, so breakfast mail packages and the cards um, post the video then I have to do the nativity scene, clean up and tidy the uh, living room a little bit, finish some of the Christmas decoration, and then this afternoon I'll make the uh, reindeer, the foam core reindeer. So that's going to be my day. And I still have dinner and, you know, whatnot. So it's going to be a busy day, even though I said I was going to rest. But hey, that's life. What am I going to do? So I'm about ready to um, wrap my packages and stuff to send. And instead of sending a gazillion boxes, because that's not cost effective, since most of the stuff that I'm sending to the ladies in the family are Vera Bradley bag, um, I have one Vera Bradley um, gift box. I'm just going to wrap them individually with their own card and I'm going to put them all into one box because they're all going to open it at the same time. They're going to be together. So there's no really any sense of me sending five or six box and then risk the possibility that one of them is not going to get their box on time. That way there's only one box being shipped. This is the nativity scene with an ornament that I forgot to place and I still have to show you four ornaments that I got at Macy's yesterday. Macy's was doing a 60% sale on Christmas ornament yesterday and when you use your card you get an extra 15%. So I got ornaments that were like, I don't know, 20 something dollars for four bucks. <laughs> I had to get them. Um, yeah, so this is the nativity scene. I'm going to put it over there. I have um, in the living room, right there, I have this little wooden church. It's actually a um, bird feeder that I purchased years ago, and I'm using that for the scene itself. I still have to get some uh, ivy from outside just to decorate it with some, um, you know, branches and whatnot, but I still haven't had breakfast, by the way. Um, so anyway, just to give you a little glimpse, these are the pieces that I get from the nativity scene. Um, they are from a, a French brand called Carbonel. They're handmade, hand-painted. This one is about, and it's, it's been <clears throat> broken right here um, because they're very fragile. This one's got to be 30-something years old. And it only gets pulled out once a year, obviously, so that's why it's still in a good shape. Um, I don't think you can find them in the U.S., but you can definitely check out the website um, if you like that style. I like it. That's the one I grew up with. Um, yeah, so let me finish my breakfast and uh, probably have a cup of tea or maybe coffee. It's quarter to ten. I should be able to go to the post office around 11.30, something like that, so that's not too bad. The day is moving slow for me, but that's not too bad. I got this wrapping paper at the uh, World Market. I think it's the cutest little thing. It's a good thing I keep all the ribbons over the years because I have some white ribbon that's going to look just gorgeous on some of this and I have a little bit of red ribbon as well. Uh, I'm going to start with this one over here, then this and this. Then I still have to mail the um, giveaway for the swatches and stuff. So yeah, pretty busy this morning and writing the cards. Um, I love, love wrapping gifts. I don't know why. Sometimes I like it better than receiving the gifts. It's kind of weird, but I really, really like wrapping gifts. I think that some of them just look absolutely beautiful and you don't want to open them. And um, to be honest, I think that comes from my grandmother. And for those of you who've had grandparents who went through the recession and, you know, the depression eras and all of that, you probably have experienced this, but my grandmother used to keep all the wrapping paper and she used to keep all the ribbons, whether they were fabric ribbons or they were uh, paper ribbons or, you know, like that waxed paper thing. She used to keep all of that. We had boxes and boxes and boxes of this. And, I mean, we haven't kept all of this since she's gone, but... I do have one cooking book that has a, a page marker that's a string of, um, you know, ribbon. 
that she kept over the years and I don't want to get rid of it because that represents her. She used those strengths for everything. Like she would tie bags, she would, uh, um, you know, wrap things again, she would use the paper to uh, cover books. I mean, it was just like the way people were back then. They were just being economical. Now we go to, um, I don't know, Costco and we buy a huge amount of wrapping paper and then it goes straight into the trash on Christmas Day, it's ridiculous. We should recycle all this stuff and use it for other purposes like covering books or even drawer liners. I mean, you can do so many things with wrapping paper after the gift has been unwrapped. Seriously, we just waste too much stuff. And I'm done. It took about, well, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, put the stuff back in. It's just going to go like that. And I have a few other cards to add because I tend to give... Um, gift cards uh, for the men. Obviously I gotta rearrange this. Not working out. Okay. So I'm gonna put this one at the bottom. This one right here. And then maybe this one is gonna go in here. Okay, that's fine. And then a gift card for the men. I gotta go get them. Put that in there. Close the box. Put the lid back on and I'm done. It's 10.40. I'm going to respond to the 17 or so cards that I received. In the box yesterday, see there's a whole bunch here, I got more over there, and I got more upstairs, and again, I want to thank you all. Some of you are sending me pictures of your family, I absolutely adore kids' pictures, and some of your girls are real good looking too. Um, Lorna, a special thank you, Lorna is from the UK, she sent me a little book for my boys, really, you didn't have to, no seriously, you don't have to. And then I have somebody else who sent me something. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Um, Cindy. Cindy in Omaha. And is Nebraska, I think. Oh, I don't know. Uh, send me another little book too, The Night Before Christmas. I thought that was really, really cute. And uh, it's one of the books that we read um, with the kids. And then uh, what else? I don't know. I have some upstairs. Maybe I'll do a uh, um, P.O. Box mail love thing because I do get a lot of cards. So I'm going to respond to those so that I can put them up on the uh, alcove in the uh, dining room slash living room because I like to have all the cards displayed. Um, not for validation but because they do look cute. Um, and I like that. So this is about ready to be wrapped up. I have the one that goes to Natalie. Uh, right here. She's in California, so I have to mail that as well. I'm going to finish your cards and mail them as soon as possible because I want to make sure you get a card from me before Christmas. So I wrote back a couple of cards. I just have to clean here. I got to go and get the gift cards to send in there. I just want to show you how I'm putting the cards. Um, and that's only some of them. They're over here. It's going to go all the way around. And over there, and I just want to give, um, I just want to show you these two little girls. These are Grace and Aubrey. They are um, Jody's little girls, and Jody sent me an amazing, amazing card and a letter about her story of hardship. And I just wanted to give a mention that, Jody, your story just absolutely melted my heart. And look at these two little girls. They are absolutely adorable god bless you for having twin girls i can only imagine how much work it is and they are just the cutest things i've ever seen they really are and then i wanted to mention also cindy cindy lost her baby back in the 80s and i know it's a long time ago but she sent me this absolutely lovely little card with a little baby boy and uh, he's an angel now and she wanted me to have him uh, watch over us so I tell you what I'm gonna put him right here on the mantle with the rest of my little Christmas decorations because I believe in angels I really do and God knows that right now oh where am I gonna put him okay right here I can tell you that right now we need to have a little angel watch over us so he's staying with us for the holidays and again another one who melted my heart you guys are wonderful i really love receiving cards i tell you and some of them you're gonna see those comments um in the cards that i'm sending you so i'm sorry i'm repeating myself but nowadays everybody is about this generic hey merry christmas to all on facebook nobody takes the time to sit down and write a note and send their wishes, handwritten, the old-fashioned way, 
put a stamp on it, go to the post office and mail it. Nobody does that anymore. I mean, I've noticed that some folks that used to send cards to us over the years, and we still see them, they don't send cards anymore. They just put, like I said, like this Merry Christmas, everybody, on, on Facebook or Twitter or the, you know, whatever, and that's it. We have to stop. Let's go back to traditions. I mean, it's so nice to get a card. It is so nice. <sighs> Oh man, I'm driving my feet today. I'm still sick. It's uh, 10 after 1. I just stood in line for 45 minutes at the post office, but I got everything out. So that's good. Um, I'm having lunch. I'm going to show you what I'm having. Same thing than usual. A salad with a, a drizzle of dressing and some grapes at zero point. Um, when I made the chicken the other day, I used the uh, carcass to make a, um, a chicken broth and then I added a little bit of uh, the yellow rice we had left over and uh, some oranges and um, what else do I have in there? I think there's a potato in there and some onions. So this is not a low calorie soup, but I really need a chicken soup right now. I'm going to count this as six points. So I'm, have six, so I'm having six points here with the soup and I'm going to have a, uh, one of those two points yolk play Greek 100 calorie in raspberry um, for dessert so yeah that's my lunch eight points I had uh, five so far this morning so that's 13 points I have 13 left yeah right, well it's almost two o'clock in the afternoon um, I have a message or question for you stay at home mom like how do you stay on track like do you actually have a schedule because I still in shower you guys it's two o'clock I just finished my lunch and responded to uh, a lot of the comments on my YouTube channel. And again, I'm so thankful I got you guys. Um, I have to pick up the kids in about 45 minutes. So I don't know if it's really worth even for me to take a shower now and then jump out in the cold. Um, I think I'm going to have to take another medication. I really am not feeling today. This is not going to be a good day in the life at all. Kind of boring if you ask me. So what I'm going to try to do is... Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up the uh, nativity scene. Um, might as well do that now. Grab some of the ivy that's outside. And um, yeah, just decorate that part which is um, over there. And then I'll go get the kids. After that, then I can take my hot bath. Pro hopefully I'll feel better. Um, I'm still going to have to make dinner. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do the reindeer. You know what? Maybe I'll just make one and see how that works out because I may be a total fail. You never know. So I always have some ivy um, that grows on the side of the house and I try to cut it down as much as I can because it is damaging um, to the walls and the paint. Um, but what I do when the season comes and I don't, I want to cut it and use it for decor but that thing will get wilted so I usually have a uh, mug like this and I put water in it and of course the water needs to be refilled every so often and then I put a uh, um, kind of like a crisscross of tape and just put the IV in it like this. So the advantage of having the tape is that it holds it. So I'm trying to find, um, and I'll show you what I do with it because it doesn't seem like much right now. So I'm hoping you can see. Uh, I'm just cutting the bottom part here and put another one over there and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to twirl it around the base of the uh, nativity scene just to have a, uh, um, a little piece of something that's green cut these as well and the advantage of having that quadrille is that it holds it in place it's not going to come off fall off or anything there we go Here, and you kind of, you know, you can put it all the way at the bottom. And you can do that with a whole bunch of plants too. I mean, if you have branches and you're afraid they're gonna fall, just go ahead and do that little um, crisscross or lattice at the bottom, and it will hold them in place. Okay, this one here. Right. Okay. Put that down a little bit. All right. The only thing is that if you don't have something that is heavy enough, it's going to tip over. But now I'm going to probably orient it in different ways so that it stays in place. And plus, it's going to be in the corner anyway. Hoping you can see what I'm doing. All right. So move this here. Put that in the corner. Put that in the front. 
just going to move these about. And when I get um, pieces like this, I'm going to use some heavy duty tape. So I can probably twist it like this, and then do the same thing. And this one's gonna stay up, and then this one I'm gonna twist it too. Never looks the same because the branches are never the same. I hope you understand that. Okay. And this one I'm gonna tape it to the other branch right here. I'm hoping you're seeing better this way. Um, and then this one right here, I'm going to just tape it to this branch right here. So they're going to be tied together. Now if I had like some kind of green twist tie, I'm sure it would look much better. I just don't have time. I need to get this thing done, period. And if the uh, uh, look of the plastic tape bothers you, you just take a piece of tape that is double sided, just loop it on itself and then take one of those leaves and just tape it on it, just like that. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to do the same thing. There's some leaves that I want to have in uh, specific orientations. So I'm going to take some tape, and again, I'm using heavy duty tape, scotch tape won't, um, it's just packing tape like this. Some scotch tape will not last at all. Um, so I want to make sure I'm getting like tape and you see I kind of like loop it in a way where it's sticky on both sides and I just take uh, some of the uh, leaves that I like and I want to showcase like this one and just tape them like this alright so I moved it and then it's facing this way but I kind of need more here I don't know if I have enough let me see how tall is this one that may be enough let me try just to give it nice volume and you know does like a, a conversation piece I guess no it's not it's too short so I'm gonna go back outside and get some more I have some Harley too I could bring uh, I could bring some Harley all right so I just need one more just to kind of fill up over there but that's pretty much it move it back a little bit and again you see I have the mug in the back here so if I need to add water, uh, which I doubt because the uh, ivy is not going to take um, a lot of water. Um, if I need to add water, I just, you know, move the whole thing, add water to the mug and bring it back. I'm going to add one more branch and then I'm ready to place my little uh, figurines in the nativity scene. Alright, so I added one more over here to fill up the corner a little bit. This is what it looks like. Then I had the uh, moss, you know, remember the moss that was on top of the uh, pot where I have the amaryllis? I moved that out because I don't really, you know, need it. And I'm putting it right here just to kind of continue the look. And I added one more branch. It's also inside the mug, so it's getting watered. And that one just goes out like this along the um, dresser, I guess, my little curio here. So this is what it looks like in the corner. For some reason, it looks like it's a little tilted this way. I'm not sure why. I think it's the maybe the nativity. Oh, okay, that's what it is. All right, so I have to prop this up. A little bit to the right I'm probably gonna use you know like a piece of cardboard or something because it does look a little tilted and and my figurines and I'm good to go 
So you see, I don't have a lot of figuring. That's it. There's a three king. I have Jesus here. They're not going to get um, there until quite some time. I'm going to start with uh, the cow and the donkey. And they go inside right here. So they're oriented. One looks this way. The other one looks this way. So I always try to put them in a way like this. So we got the key, so I have the cow and the donkey. All right, so and then I'm going to put Mary on the right. Next one is Joseph, right here. All right, now baby Jesus, not born until the 25th, goes in the back, same way with the three kings. It's these three guys right here. All right? They go in hiding because they didn't show up yet. That's for the epiphany. Goes over there. All right, so now we're gonna create the little stories. I have the old guy, and I kind of tend to put them the same way all the time. I have the old guy with his goat and he's always talking with the uh, merchant here who has a little uh, pumpkin and they always chit chat about how times have changed then I have the lady who has the uh, fish this is by the way this is a southern France tradition uh, from Provence um, she's always talking and chatting with the milk lady like this actually this time around they're gonna go this way they like to gossip then I have the uh, village priest he always stays at the door he greets people as they come in and he likes to talk with the lady who actually is in charge of the sheep and there's one to I always feel like I have more so there's always a little sheep next to her and then this one has a broken leg so I kind of put him in a way where you don't see that he has a broken leg like that then I have this lady right here she's just hanging around and that's the husband to the lady over there he's got the fish too so he's going to be talking with her as well. Am I crazy? You think I'm crazy, right? I'm making those little stories up. But that's what a nativity scene is. You got to have, you know, like a real scenery going on. And then the angel, of course, I tend to place the angel all the way on top like this. But I have to put double tape to make sure that he's not going anywhere. Because I can't replace those. No way. Um, right. So this is done. Probably gonna arrange this a little bit, and um, I'm not being fussy. It's just it's my childhood nativity scene. I gotta make sure you know it stays the same. And now I just realized I had a potpourri there before. I could probably use some of these. They don't smell like anything anymore. Just to give it a little bit of color. So I'm gonna see what can I what I can do to kind of ornate it a little bit more. And uh, then I'll be done and go pick up the kids. So there it is, the nativity scene has been placed. So pretty much every year I forget to put a light inside the um, birdhouse. It would be nice, but I forget. So And I forgot again this year. I should put a note um, for next year. I don't have time to go drill it and do some kind of electrical work. Maybe I'll figure out a way to find one of those, um, what you call them, um, like the tea light candles that are, that are battery operated. I could probably use one of those and uh, place it in a way where the light shines inside. That would be pretty. But anyway, so this is down so from far away. This is what it looks like. I had to remove the angel because the uh, um, my little tape thing didn't work. So I got to figure out something else. If I had museum putty, that would be nice. Uh, one of you suggested that, but I wouldn't know where to get it. So, yep. Didn't take too long. I don't even think it's 2.30 yet. So I think it took me maybe 20 minutes to do this. And uh, I like the way it looks. Takes the whole corner, but it's pretty. Like it.
I have this one right here with the uh, egg next to it and then on the other side I did exactly the same thing I put the new peacock right here with the egg next to it and the reason why I did that is because the colors kind of complement one another and they tie in with the purple that's next to it I try to do areas of color combinations like for instance you see here I have purple and peacock blue and another uh, peacock with purple and then I have the Sherazad right here on the uh, magic carpet and she's peacock blue and purple as well and it kind of but then again because most of the colors are the same um, they all tie in um, generally speaking when you want to do a, a nice Christmas tree I'm realizing that I need some peacock blue over there but I'm not gonna touch it again um, you want to put the smaller ornaments to the top and the larger ornament towards the bottom that way you keep the nice gradient in size it keeps you uh, you um, Christmas tree fluted I guess but there will come a point here with this tree where we'll have absolutely zero room left to put any kind of ornament at that point I'll either have two solutions one get a bigger tree but that means a taller tree so I don't know if I can do that or I'll get a second tree and I'll do the whole process over again and that may be fun because you can tell I really really love doing this absolutely love it and I have two turtle doves that are eating the seed that goes on the ground. Well, this really is the 12 days of Christmas. Huh. I think they're turtle doves, I'm not sure. Oh my, so it's 5.25 and it's a good thing that I asked a friend of mine to come and pick up Willie and take him to karate because mama fell asleep in the tub. I fell asleep and I slept for an hour and a half. And you know what woke me up? The sound of my own snoring. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I gotta get the drapes down. So anyway, um, I decided to get out of the tub eventually and uh, put a lot of oil on my face. That's probably why you see me um, all shiny. I can't breathe. <laughs> you probably hear it in my voice too. Uh, and uh, I have zero sense of smell right now. None whatsoever. The uh, fridge could be producing the foulest odor of abandoned food. I wouldn't have a clue. I'm sorry this was not the most fascinating vlog in the series. I was really, really sick. I'm feeling a little bit better because I took my meds again. But I'm definitely going to bed right after dinner. So I bid you good night and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!